Okay. Everyone take a breath. <laughs> We're getting in so much art and Torah at the same time. I'm like, I love Torah and I love art. And so much at once is just uh, expanding, expansive. Um, so I'm sorry I didn't double check in the room properly before, just to make sure. Um, but I don't see Dr. David Kramer or David Wander. If you're here, say hello. <laughs> okay, so um, in that case, we will, we will do a bit of what we did before. And this was the artwork uh, that came about from Der Chavruta on Parshat Vayera. And um, for those who um, didn't get a chance to participate or, or, or listen to their chavruta, what was interesting in this one was that there were different layers that, um, that came about. We have kind of, if I remember correctly, it's like a paper, uh, paper cut type of, uh, initial drawing and then uh, initial collage and then this very detailed painting um, that we have on the left side and um yeah we i i will read can you, oh are we here uh, can you see me yeah yeah oh I don't know you're if, here I just came okay here. Right. okay great Yes, Wait. better than me speaking. <laughs> Please, uh, <laughs> no, you're doing great. I guess. You, share, you share your work here. Well, actually, um, the uh, the rabbi that I worked with couldn't be here today. So his name is uh, David Kramer, Rabbi Professor David Kramer. And um, we have worked together for, I guess, about 14 years. And we've, um, over that time, We've done a whole series of books. We did the five Megillot, and we did Jonah, and we did Judith, and we did uh, stories of Elimelech of Lezhensk and, and Zusha, and uh, the stories of David and uh, Samson. But we also, um, I've, I've, I've worked on something called um, the five books of David, and I'm now working on the four books of Moses. So um, I've done a series, I'm working on a series, um, and I work um, I work in a, in a accordion book form, so the work can be, um, uh, let's see, the work can be maybe 30 feet long. This, actually, this piece here was done on wood, so, um, and this was something, um, something that I did, um, uh, one second. Uh, this is something that I did um, specifically for this project. But I've been working on uh, the, the story of Moses from uh, from birth till um, till his death. So what this is, um, I I rarely show two images of the same image. Um, this uh, I started this image, and David Kramer saw this, and he liked the one on the uh, on the right, and he said, "Oh, you really captured it." And then I worked more uh, on another board. Uh, these are done on wood. And uh, the one on the left is the one that I actually prefer, but, um, but he uh, chose the one on the right. Um, should I, can I read what he said about uh, this? Is that, is that appropriate to do that? Okay. So he said, uh, uh, it is this duality, the choice that I see represented in the work, the two images of Moses, the messenger. In the first earlier rougher image, Moses is hardly present. His structure is a mere scaffolding to be filled in by divine spirit, as the divine spirit requires. In the second, Moses is a fully formed personality, one that lives, his experiences on his face. We see the burnt mouth, the furrowed brow, the tired eyes, and the worn complexion. This is a personality whose surrounding story has been filled in. The trauma, the injury, the childhood choice, the fear, the brutality, and the plagues, the, the effort and trials of God's promise of salvation, which are uh, represented by the cups. This too is God's messenger, but also his own. So which choice must we make when we are called upon to follow God's command? Must we erase, must we erase our personalities, our wills, 
or may we be fully God's servants while remaining fully ourselves. Pious people through the ages have embraced both choices, one or the other as best path. I would like to believe that God's call doesn't demand self-emptying, but I recognize that there are many times for both options. Um, the idea behind this is, um, yeah, the idea is that um, that the, the, the first one, it, it's sort of showing Moshe, but you really don't know who he is. You just know where it would go, where, where it would be. Um, the, uh, the other one, now let me speak a little bit about how I came upon that. Um, this one, really, I see Moses as a person who was dealing with huge trauma his entire life and who was also trained as a warrior. So his way of working in the beginning of his life was a little bit different than most. Uh, in the on the bottom part of the painting, can you make that larger? Is that possible to make this? Uh... Um, in the bottom part of the painting, there's a story. Uh, it's like a Midrash story um, where um, uh, he puts on Pharaoh's hat and uh, he and everybody in the in the in the palace gets nervous and thinks he's trying to take Pharaoh's position, and they lay in front of him a a, um, a scarab and a burning coal, and he goes to reach for the scarab, which at the time was a sign of royalty, a gold one. But an angel comes and grabs his hand, has him grab the coal that's on fire and put it in his mouth. The idea behind that is that, at, from this point on, he burnt his mouth. He had a problem speaking, and he's the one who's chosen to speak. There's also a trauma that we don't really think about much, but that idea of a fire burning his mouth at a young age, when he's told to do actually what he's supposed to do, he has to sit or bow in front of a fire. So there's something about the image of fire that comes with it. Um, here, I tried to portray him in the, in the, in the Torah. He's an 83-year-old man. I tried to show him as, as a, a person with, with white hair, white beard. I tried to show the burnt mouth that he had. Um, and um, he's surrounded by the plagues that he's going to talk about, that he's telling the people about, which um, I found to be pretty scary. He's illuminated by the light of the fire, of the, of the fire, the burning bush. And uh, close to him are hands coming in on the sides, telling him, um, I will take you, you know, I will liberate you. And, and, it, and it brings back the idea that we all see ourselves as being liberated from Egypt in the Seder, in the Passover Seder. So it brings back the idea of the four cups of wine. But um, I basically wanted this to be a mirror where we see ourselves in it. And in that sense, um, I, this, is, this is what I tried to uh, portray with the piece. But I, I really, um, really want to stress the idea that uh, the trauma that he felt as a child actually lived throughout his life. And, and he being the one who um, who's, has to be the spokesman. I also love as his life goes on, he actually has a, a conversation with Hashem. He actually, they're on talking terms. They really, um, he does amazing things where it almost feels to me when they're talking about destroying the people, but don't destroy the people. These, you know, all of the things, the, the bargaining, the talking between Moshe and Hashem is amazing. And it's done with a person who is actually, um, I don't know, put upon, of who's a little bit different than the whole group. And uh, this is this is what I tried to portray. Yeah. Uh, the work is uh, the way I work is I work on wood. I work in um, in different colors of rice paper. I cut those rice papers out and then I glue them on with um, acrylic um, matte medium. And then on top of that, I'll paint in uh, in acrylic paint. And then I might go back in and add more paper. Um, and uh, and then yeah, that's that's usually the way I work. And then usually, because I was a printmaker for many years, I'll usually I'll usually put uh, paint on top of it and rub it back selectively as if it were an etching plate or a, a collar type plate. But these and these pieces are about um, I don't know eighteen by twenty four something like that. Yeah. So that's um, that's what I have to say. Does anybody have any questions about this? Oh, Richard. Uh, okay. And Yona, I see. Hey, David. Yeah. 
Great stuff. So now, if my memory serves me correct, this, the left-hand painting has been worked on since the presentation way back when. No, no, no. It was this. Oh, is really? What, this is from the presentation. Oh, really? Okay, because I did not remember the measure, the bottom, which really is 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 quite astounding. I mean, you know, it's really um, I'm very impressed. Anyway, thank you, thank you, Koa. Thank Beautiful. you, thank you. That's that's sort of I sort of made that to be the key to the painting. You know, mm -hmm. that it's actually, in fact, you know, um, in this is, you know, from the uh, Photoshop. I was, I, I did another painting and I, I added it to it. But um, the idea was that the entire story is based on when he was a kid and he put the fire in his mouth. So that, that's, um, that's how that came out. Yeah. Yeah. So David, uh, just about 10 minutes ago, you asked me about uh, abstract versus representation. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna throw this back at you. <laughs> okay, fine. Why not? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's funny. Um, uh, the uh, you know, I well, ask the question. I, I don't want to. I don't want to. Right. Well, you know, you're. I know that you have. You know, you said you love the left side. You know, the left painting. You weren't sure about the right one. Um, I had the same dilemma because I was working abstract and I thought, is it enough? Because I'm so used to painting figures, etc. I'm like, is it really, is it enough? And Toby said, yes, it's enough. And I'm saying the same thing to you. The one on the right is just a strong, it's totally different, but it has so much value on its own. It's very, very powerful. Thank you. You know, I mean, I have that same dichotomy. I have that same fight with my own, with myself. But, you know, David Kramer, who I study with, when he saw the one on the right, I don't know if you had heard, when he saw the one on the right, he said, that's it. It's finished. You don't need more than that. This is, uh, you know, it's enough. What I also had, which I didn't put in with the co colored paper, there's a fire from the bush that's underneath. But if you look at the drawing, there was going to be a fire in his mouth also. So that, but even, even that isn't in it. But I do have the feeling that, you know, what I mean to say, the, the psychological trauma that, that I mean to be talking about uh, comes out stronger in the, in the one on the left to me. You know, but it's funny to, to show two pieces when one is, one is asked, you know, it's for one. You know? So that's, uh, that, yes. that really shows that, yeah. Yeah, um, uh, this is Rena Fruchter. I'm, I'm curious as to um, why uh, Moshe is depicted in such a modern way in terms of the hair and the quad. Right, right. The reason I do that is because, you know, you know, it's funny that you say, you say in a modern way. Uh, I'm always taken by the painting, the biblical paintings from the Renaissance. And I think, oh, that's the way they looked. But in fact, they're dressed like they were dressed in the Renaissance. Or maybe they have some bathrobe things on. But, you know, I don't think it's actually, we know what Moses looked like, of course. We don't know what he dressed in. So when I talk about making it something where we see ourselves when we look at Moses, that's why I make it contemporary. And I, and I feel, you know, it's a, it's a struggle that he had. It's a struggle we all have. So I, I, that's why I tried to make it actually almost as contemporary as I could make it. I also tried to, not so successfully, but the four hands that are coming on all sides, I tried to show different complexions of skin color. Um, that's what I tried. That's what I tried to show. Um, yeah, that's why. Thank you. I mean, I'll, I'll have a, a sacrifice of Isaac painting with somebody wearing a suit and tie. I mean, you know, there's no problem with, me. you know, like that's, yeah, that's the way I work. Bye. Any other questions? I think we're actually Thank at you. a wrap up, and Wonderful. which is great. There's so much here. And I'll just say it like a very interesting thing that um, when you're when you're saying the trauma that Moshe kind of experienced, those hands that are coming towards him with all of these uh, demands, I think there's something interesting like save us and you you uh, you took us and it, those are all the things that we say that God did and yet it's like through Moses and you can kind of see that pain on on the face there's a lot that's there to look into right. Right. wonderful um, thank you yeah thank you so much